Hello, I'm Dudley Moore. And the program you're about to see was taped at the 8th Van Cliburn International Piano Competition, uh, which took place earlier this year in spring uh, at Fort Worth, Texas. It's one of the world's most prestigious music competitions, and it awards medals, gold, silver, and bronze, as well as uh, concert engagements with major orchestras, and a Carnegie Hall debut for the winner. For the 38 young pianists, this was a chance for them to earn the recognition that would open the doors to the concert stages. Looking back at the, the eighth Van Cliburn piano competition is a chance both to hear beautiful music and to share in a few dreams that came true right here on this stage. And for the young pianists, I think one can say they had one thing in common. They were all here to make music. Statistics are, are frightening. Every springtime, from all our conservatories, from all our music departments in universities, they graduate with bachelors of music, 40,000 piano players. Every springtime. Let's, let's kneel you in front. That'll be better. I guess the ostensible aim of a competition is to win first prize, but really the aim is to be heard, to be noticed, to have some kind of exposure. I am nervous, of course. It's absolutely removed from, uh, from the life of, a, of an artist. Um, bullfight, athletic uh, event, Olympics, that's what it, it's much uh, closer to. José Carlos Cucarelli, Mere de todo un poco, Italy. Jean Flambavouze, France. Carol Mucciari, Hungary. Andrew Wilde, England. Winning a competition is uh, based on many, many, many issues. Uh, of course, luck is one of them. Take care. 25. 25. Number 10. Number 10. 35. <laughs> My price was one billion zlotych. This is oh, Polish money. Was good. <laughs> I had never been to America. For me, I really came to see a little bit of Texas and hope for the best. And I worked my head off when I arrived here. I have such vivid memories of it. Um, Sometimes when I have dreams, I have dreams of that competition even today. Sometimes nightmares do. My opinion of competitions is that they're absolutely the worst form of finding talent, except for all the others. I just wanted to start off with a very quick recapitulation of how you all got here. You know that we had 8,000 applications sent out and we had over 250 applicants. 
and, as you know, our camera crews then videotape you in studios and concert halls around the world. We videotape you because performance is not only an oral experience, but a visual one as well. Can we go back up to the second movement? We then assembled here in Fort Worth the five renowned musicians who served as our screening jury. Is this the kind of person we're looking for? Or? Well, should we go ahead and continue then? It's 100 and 150 to go. <laughs> They tirelessly screened almost 200 video cassettes from America, Europe, the Far East, and the Soviet Union. And in the opinion of the jury, you are the 38 top people of your generation in the world today. So we have instructed all the members of the jury that what we are looking for are the true communicators the people with something to say and the ability to communicate it. What they have to really recognize are the people who are making music. Glenn Clyburn has the best offer for the first prize winner because there is a Van Clyburn Foundation who directly manages you for two, three years. I don't like so much competitions. <laughs> I really don't like. But if I was here, it was just because the, the Clyburn is... Uh, I think that it's really the biggest one. When I figured it out, it's better to do the big ones than to do the smaller ones. Because if you win, if you win a lot, if you lose, you lose a lot, but it's better than to win a little or, or, or lose a little. So I think it's better to go to the big ones right away. I think of all composers, Bach is where you ha actually have more freedom. Um, the only thing that is written down are all the notes, and uh, he doesn't give you dynamic uh, indications, doesn't give you tempis. So I think you have lots of freedom in there. It's very easy to just kind of play it, you know, and be safe. And I think that's what people don't want to hear. They're looking for character. They're looking for someone who can take a piece of music and make some decisions and go for it. Take a chance, you know. Regardless the period um, of when music was written, when it was performed, it basically stems from something very human. And that human element has never changed. It's always been the same, continues to be the same, and will always be. focus yourself and gather a lot of repertoire for an event competition, it makes them, it, it 
in some cases, makes them work in a way that they wouldn't work otherwise. There is a certain amount of workout, in a way, like technical workout that, that I try to do every day. Warm up and just kind of feel fit to play. It's like working in your insides, <laughs> trying out things that you will later on present in a very exhibitionistic way. As I go on practicing, I can spend a day in, in four or five measures that I just, I just can't get them the right articulation and the right sound. And you know, it's, it, comes, it comes really from, from, the, from the most, I mean, it's, it's almost like making love, you know? I cannot make love in front of people. Should practice, but if everything goes as you want it to, I don't think practicing four, five, even six hours would help a day or two, be two days before you have to play. I think it's important in any competitions to find time to get out of all the stress of this whole thing. And this is uh, relaxing in a way uh, to get out of that instrument and go to this one. to play himself. And there was this, this um, um, difficulty uh, that you have to play. Uh, the, the, all this thing. And uh, you know the story that he, he put, he tried to, 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 to play it so loud and so clear, and he just break completely his hands, his left, his right hand. And uh, he couldn't play at all after. Sometimes I, I practice five, six hours, and there are days when I can't touch the piano. Sometimes you are very tired, you are anxious, or you are, I don't know what. You have to forget about it or, or try to renew the feeling. Here, the surrounding is so relaxing. I arrived here from Yugoslavia. And I was really astonished about this house where I am staying. My hostesses are really wonderful and it's really inspiring. We uh, know enough about him to uh, research the foods he probably likes. Got a, we have a shashlik recipe now for a <laughs> lamb kebabs, Uzbek style. Stovam Nuravica, yes, yet. Will be when Claire Clyburn in the competition, uh, will be he listen some competitors. Sometimes yes, sometimes yeah. no. So it's very difficult to say how important competitions are. I think they are important when there is a really huge, great talent, like the first Tchaikovsky competition where there was Van Kleiburn. And it was wonderful that we could have somebody like that and give him a first prize that uh, no one had any doubts about. That's wonderful. Then one feels that that competition was worth having. Well, I think it probably was a romantic fantasy of mine because it was just to be able to see the Church of St. Basil and be able to see the Moscow Conservatory and the fabulous Bolshoi Zal of the conservatory where all of these famous people had played. 
And there happened to be a competition. It just seemed like such a natural thing for me because I was always so extremely interested in seeing Russia. Jury members find it very hard, in fact, to find a satisfactory basis for judgment. And very often, more often than not, the judgment is veered towards, um, towards thinking of the instrumental achievement rather than the artistic achievement. One of the, the big criticisms of competitions is frequently every, the innocuous player, the one who offends the least amount of people, wins. That's one of the things that we're concerned with. Uh, we want to make sure that the right person wins the competition, the person that, uh, that really has the chance at a, at a major career. We're looking for something which is uh, intangible and something which can't be put into words. Uh, we're looking for something which is to do with charisma and total authority. John is absolutely right that there are many intangible factors. It's not just how you play the piano, how you look. There are many unforeseen, un unsuspected things that, that uh, provide that special aura for an artist. I think what we're looking for is somebody who touches us. I thought it was very wise that, that they ask us to, to really be ourselves and, and to be individual. And I'm glad they said that because it, I didn't feel like so much that I was in a competition as much as I could just make my statement. You've still got to say something. We're supposed to take great pieces and, and give a new, fresh, exciting, uh, communicative approach to it and, and take Mo make Mozart's or whoever's music alive and take it across the, the footlights to the audience and make that really live. It is, it is very hard to play Mozart because it's really simple and it's really very tricky, even if we think about its simplicity. maybe. That's the kind of simplicity that, that can really become very tricky. I think we can try to immerse ourselves in the music, in the history of the music, in uh, the emotions of the composer at the moment of composition. And yet what will finally come out is uh, what we are as human beings. It's always scary to me how much we reveal when we play.
it's more of a challenge to play works that demand a more emotional input. It's too tragic to really experience it in life. However, in music, it, it's it's a it's real uh, profound joy to get involved in uh, in, in a composer's idea of of human sadness, human tragedy. Holding back is much worse than just let it all out. If you miss a couple notes, I don't think anyone would really uh, think you know you're uh, not a great performer because you miss notes. I think that the only thing we can do is just try to, to be honest with the score. Because I believe very much in what Busoni said, that there are two kinds of pianists, one who are playing to show music and one the ones who are playing to show themselves. And I, I want to be in the, in the first group of pianists. I don't want to make a competition and see who is jumping more on the bench or who is acting in the best way. It's not the show for, for the public or for... You feel, as an artist, I mean, you feel immediately if the person that is playing is sincere and is, of course, it, if it is sensitive and if it is true.
broken string at the end. We're going to try to fix it. Already within the, any competition is a controversy because within the jury should be controversy. Otherwise, it will be uh, it, will, it will be absolutely <laughs> boring to death uh, experience for for everybody. Why? Why do you think that person? I, I, I don't understand. I mean, you were you were you're so. Well, in the first place, he's gotten a, a great number of votes, and I've heard this competitor, just as a dear colleague of mine says, he's heard a competitor play very beautifully a short time ago. I've heard this particular person play very well. Well, I know, but no, I'm talking about talent. That he deserves to be included in, the, in, in this particular you're, round. You're I don't see how. 14 or 15 people on a jury can all c come to the same opinion about who should, sh who should win. I suppose a half of my votes have come through, which is something. I suppose it could have been not. <laughs> <laughs> we just write names. And the uh, yeah, computer we uh, counted. Ever, we don't discuss it openly. Because if we start discussion, open discussion, it will be endless. I was so happy. You're happy. Yeah. You think it was people I, you wanted, really? I got You're 11 happy? out of 12, and I'm very, 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 very pleased. And so oh, 11. 11. I had 10. You had 10. Oh, well, we, we did very well. <laughs> so I think Nobody. we got 10. How did you? I made 9 out of 11. That's my 9 out of 12. Decreasing. It will change all my life. I will have a, a lot of opportunity to play. Uh, in the whole world. That's enough for me. <laughs> the jury has reached a verdict. <laughs> I'm going to call the names out of the 12 competitors who will go into the semifinals. Ling Hai. Kyle Mee. Jean Eflam Barouze. Some of the people who I thought would get in, you know, suddenly I didn't I didn't hear their names being called and they were passing them by and I was like, whoa, <laughs> what's going on here? Angela Chang. And, and it seemed to me like they had, it, they had listed at least 12 or 13 Jan names already, and uh, that, that, you know, my chances were over, I, I had thought. Kevin Kenner. If I remember right, I think I jumped over the seat in front of me <laughs> instead of walking out, you know, politely out of the aisle. Alexander Starkman. <laughs> Alexei Sultanov. I was dying because my name almost the last to be called. They started with the H, then, then they called it M, and then there was there was B. Eliso Bokvatze. There were so many and so many, I could not count them anymore. Jose Carlos Cocarelli. And all of a sudden I could listen my name. <laughs> it was not bad. And Benedetto Lupo. <laughs> Thank you very much. Almeno questo, almeno questa soddisfazione. Il trio latino. Trio latino. <laughs> Dane che coi. At first, when they called my name, I was very happy. Then I became hysterical when I realized that I wouldn't have to play again. <laughs> I would like to go home now. It's the only instrument that is played by not embracing it. If you stop to think of every other instrument, it is held, tucked under the chin, held between the legs, which gets very personal. The first time I think I saw a grand piano, 
I said to my mother, well, I like that instrument just by looking at it. Uh, I want to play that. It's the closest you get to an orchestra. I think these are four instruments playing. Sometimes you, you have to cheat because you can do with the inner voice. How to make this inevitable, inexorable line of continuity from note to note to note to note by simply depressing a series of levers. That's, that's the great challenge, I think, for the piano. Warm up your fingers. Very flamboyant, extremely given. We heard him playing Scott Joplin before our rehearsal. It's fantastic. But, uh, you know, un unfortunately a little bit inexperienced in chamber music, and he, he, he could be a very good chamber music player because he's a very communicative person. It's, it's not that easy to sit down and, and play a quintet for the first time. every time at us, and then we get the feeling of how we're all feeling together. Because we can see you, yeah. Okay? Chamber music is the exchange and the interplay in, uh, between artists. Uh, and that means that you, you capture an idea that someone else plays and you play it with that idea and you, you really work together and, and the melodic lines go from one instrument to another. Chamber music should be the result of people working together that you can't accomplish by yourself. Yeah, they were Yeah, that's not it. When he's busy playing many notes, uh, he's still listening to us at the same time. Uh, this is his uh, forte, I think. There have been moments when it's actually been fun. Like like when it, we did the Brown Sister. I just, I, I was having a ball. I mean, I couldn't help but smiling a couple of times in, be, in between the movements because it was just, it was just fun. It really was. Yes, I love to do actually from 
I to the end one more time. Okay, so song I has the suffix. Western music yeah. is very much beloved now in China. Children start with an early age from five or six to start to learn piano, and the most, the main repertoire is Western music actually. I think we learn very, very quickly uh, about these musicians, probably more quickly than the jury can really learn. What is the best way to start? <laughs> Close your eyes. <laughs> Within the first few seconds of a rehearsal, we, we know a lot about the makeup of the, of the musician. <laughs> Sometimes pianists are very afraid to play chamber music. They, they think that they have just to play much softer, uh, that's all. It, that's not true, especially for a king. Yes, I like it. <laughs> I guess when he was playing, he forgot it was a competition. It was just a part of music making. here for the competition because I heard clever. Okay, it was my plate and uh, I really felt sentimental and fun. And I still have this record I made tape machine and everybody said that I, I smiled all the way through the concert because it was only stu stupid smile who only could describe my feelings but in what he did. Half of you must be on the stage relating to the music, and half of you must be in the audience trying to see how the audience is feeling what you're trying to say, because it's for them that you're playing, it is not for yourself. It was an unbelievable happening. He was representing a freedom. He was representing a great country in America, but most and first, first and foremost, he was representing that spirit which Russia at that time lost and didn't have. And he came and he reminded Russia who they are. Audience wants information, spiritual information. That's why the creator speaks to the future or to the unknown audience.
Безусловно, это, так сказать, констатировать. И определенное состояние, когда вот на концерте играешь. It's a magical moment that happens to you on the stage. When you play in concert the way you want to play, it's then that you have special contact with the audience. that uh, Moscow Conservatory and, and Russian school generally is oriented to pack as much repertoire to give you strength to, to create warrior from student. You must be a warrior. You, you, you cannot just play piano. It was worthwhile to come here because every day we meet such beautiful people. Since we live in different countries, with different governments, for two nations to come to know each other better, we must learn about each other's lives. in music, through music, is our own sense of awareness of the music, of emotions, of psychological states. And the richer those awarenesses are, the richer our performances will be, the richer the communication to the listener. To me, the piece is uh, sort of a struggle with, with life, a tremendous amount of sadness in the piece, and it's very, it's not a happy piece to me. I left home in a very early age, so I've, I've been on my own for the last six, seven years. I've been through a lot of, well, happiness and, and pain, so it does, help your playing. I think music is meant to be communicated to, to people, but I try to create a world around me. I, I've never had drugs, so I don't know what it feels like. If it was um, similar to a high that way, I can't really compare it. But it's, uh, it's a sense that your whole body is just uh, vibrating with, with, the, with the excitement that you have created within yourself. There are so many people who can play extremely well, and only some of them for some reason are liked by the audiences and hailed as something special. But it is a, it's a mystery, charisma, whatever you call it, 
but we simply cannot predict who and why will make a successful career. By yourself it sounds fine, but the quintet will sound messy as anything if we don't put too much going on. What about it? He can do anything in the world, anything. His greatest skill from piano to fortissimo, I mean, his greatest uh, range of his feelings. You can teach these things. Elisa, for instance, is very flexible, very feminine. She has a very refined approach to the piano. Because she, she's very close to the piano. She doesn't play far from the piano. It's one organism. Master in the, this middle things, you know, and structuring things. So, but you, you, you can, can, you stay. can sing. Okay, I okay, can sing. Can we do one more time from here? Yeah. yeah. Before his crescendo, maybe right. we did yeah. one more. Look. Yeah. Yeah. Alexander Starkman, he came into the rehearsal with very, very fixed ideas, so specific that one wondered whether he was even listening to himself while he was playing. He was listening to every single thing we did, and. Demanding every detail, which we really respected that tremendously. He was so thoroughly prepared. <laughs> His communication with the audience were, is one where he, he bowls people over with the intensity of, of intent. Uh, and in fact, in between movements in the performance, the, the audience couldn't couldn't move. They they couldn't even breathe. His world is so intense that you have to be drawn into it. There will be people who, who can't handle that kind of intensity. They want something more friendly, but they're not going to get that from him.
Да, конечно, мы очень любим джаз, джаз рок. I like jazz and jazz rock. Ну, я думаю, да. If they would let me, I'd make good money with it. I like all kinds of music, especially American music. It's a strange profession. You have to have the greatest sensitivity in the world. You have to have a skin that's translucent, practically. When you're away from the music and you're facing reviews, travel, all these things, uh, you're expected to have the skin of a rhinoceros. As you can see by the lateness of the hour, this was not an easy decision, and these are the, the finalists. Eliso Bokvadze. <laughs> Jose Carlos Coporelli. <laughs> Benedetto Lupo. Alexander Starkman. <laughs> Alexei Sultanov. <laughs> and Chan Ying. Called home, I called my girlfriend, and I just told her that I that I was in the finals, and she was thrilled. She died in the fall before results. She was very nervous. Ciao, senti, io ho chiamato qui perché a casa non c'è Rosanna. Io sono passato in finale. Ciao, bella. Ciao. My teacher apparently was mad at me and not giving him a call. So I caught him last night. I told him that I bought his tuxedo here. <laughs> and everything is very, very different. The cycle is different. Chamber music is very different. Orchestra is very different. It shows those three different elements show really can show very well the, the personality and abilities. Jose Carlos Pocarelli. I think it will be better if it will suddenly a little bit Or oh, you want to be more sudden? Yeah, more suddenly in tempo. Silence please.
Six finalists sitting in the audience, all of whom have wrestled with the Black Beast. The sixth prize winner of the eighth Van Cliburn International Piano Competition is Eliso Bogvadze. The fifth prize winner of the 8th Van Cliburn International Piano Competition is Ten Ying.
The fourth prize winner of the eighth Van Kleiben International Piano Competition is Alexander Starkman. is also known as the Bronze Medal. The Bronze Medalist of the 8th Van Kleiben International Piano Competition is Benedetto Lupo.
the second prize carries with it a $10,000 cash award, which is underwritten by the Fuller Foundation. The first prize carries a cash award of $15,000, concert tours, and a recital debut in Carnegie Hall. The silver medalist of the 8th Van Cliburn International Piano Competition is Jose Carlos Coparelli.
And the gold medalist of the 8th Van Cliburn International Piano Competition is Alexei Sultanov.
I think the most important thing for a young person going into classical music is he must love it more than anything in the world and to feel that without it his life would be incomplete and so he has to have it at all cost and at all expense for the rest of his life. I think the public liked me because my playing was always on the edge. They had to support me because they were afraid that I would fall down. <laughs> 